Hi there, it's Shannon Gracie from Miracosta College, and we are working out of Robert Blitzer's Introductory and Intermediate Algebra for College Students textbook. Today we'll be covering section 6.4, which goes over uh, special forms, factoring special forms. Now, I got to tell you, you're going to have to make a decision. Um, the factoring by grouping skills that, that I've taught you and, you know, the other skills that we have learned will work for the special forms, all right? So if you are not comfortable using these formulas that you're going to learn in this section, that's okay. Factor it the regular way, all right? Now, I will be showing in this section the special forms. So, you know, take a look at it, you know, do the work the best you can. But at the end of the day, um, what you will be tested on are only the difference of two squares and then perfect square trinomials. I will teach you about the sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes that will not be on our um, exam. Okay? All right, here we go. Today, uh, we start out with a warm up. So go ahead and use your skills that you've learned to factor these four problems. All right, remember, you look through all the terms first to make sure that there's no factor in common. And then after that, you, you use the things that we've learned. On your mark, get set, go. Pause the movie. All right, let's see how you did. So we're making our uh, x for this guy. I've looked through the terms. There's no factor in common. My product that I put in is 3 times negative 14. So I will get negative 42, right? Yes, negative 42. And remember, that's from multiplying these numbers here. And then I end up with I've got a minus here of negative product, so that means when I combine like terms, I'll have opposing signs, and so I'll have a difference of negative 1. So, here we go. Let's see what those numbers would be. Uh, it looks to me like 6 and 7 fit the bill, and the 7 has to be negative, and the 6 has to be positive. Okay, so now, rewriting, we'll have 3a squared, minus 7ab plus 6ab minus 14b squared. So again, here's our middle term and how we've split it. And here's our red group and our blue group. So from the red group, I believe we can factor out an a. And we are left with 3a minus 7b from our blue group, let's see, we can factor out a 2b, and then we'll be left with 3a minus 7b. So that was our red group and our blue group. And we have a common binomial factor of 3a minus 7b. So we factor that out, and then we're left with a plus 2b. All right, how'd you do on that one? Do okay? Awesome. Okay, so part b. I'm looking at the three terms there. Let's see, they, I can certainly factor out a 3, right, from each one. So this will be 3, and then we'll be left with a 4x squared minus 11x's plus 7. Make our x to set up the factoring by grouping. Positive 28 goes in the top, negative 11 in the bottom. And again, the positive 28 came from that product. We have a positive product and a negative in the middle term, so what that means is combining like terms will be the result of adding two negatives. So 
the two numbers that fit the bill will be da -da 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 -da, negative 7 and negative 4. So now, 3 times 4x squared minus 7x minus 4x plus 7. So we split the 11x using the negative 7x minus 4x. So then we will get 3 times, here's our red group and here's our blue group. So we can factor out an x from the red group and we're left with 4x minus 7. And be careful, you've got to factor out a minus 1 in order to be left with 4x minus 7 here. We have a common binomial factor of 4x minus 7. And this was the result of our blue group and our red group. So factoring out the 4x minus 7 and keeping the 3 going along for the ride, we get this end result. Um, so be careful. I bet there might be one or two of you out there that forgot to keep the 3 going. Make sure you keep your work very organized. Okay, coming up here we have, let's see, you can certainly factor out, I think, 20z, and we'll get 4z squared plus 4z minus 3, and then we make, make our x over here. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and then we have a positive 4. So again, we got the negative 12 using the product of those numbers. And the numbers that work, let's see, there's a negative product, so we have to have opposing signs. So two numbers that have a difference of 4 and a product of negative 12. Yep, you got it, negative 2 and positive 6. So here we go, fun times in the factoring playground. So the 20z goes along for the ride. We split the 4z by writing it as minus 2z plus 6z, and the minus 3 continues on. So this is how we split our middle term into 2. And here's our red group, and here's our blue group. So we will get 20z. We can factor out a 2z from the red group and we're left with 2z minus 1. And then if we factor out a positive 3, we'll be left with 2z minus 1 from the blue group. Well, that was our blue group and our red group. And da -dun, da dun we have a common binomial factor of 2z minus 1. So when we factor that out, we'll be left with 2z plus 3. And we are done. So last warm-up problem. Let's see, each a term is even, so we could certainly factor out a 2. I highly recommend that we factor out a negative 2. We can also factor out a y to the fourth, so then we'll be left with 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. Did I miss anything? I think that's good. And then our x will be made from, we have a negative 30 as the overall product and a negative 7 as the resulting, the result of combining like terms. A negative product means that we have opposing signs. So two numbers that have a product of negative 30 and a difference of negative 7. 10 and 3, and we have a negative number so in the center, so that'll be negative 10, positive 3. 
So the negative 2y to the fourth goes along for the ride. We'll have 5x squared minus, be careful, there's a, oh no, there's no y, just a minus a 10x plus 3x and then minus 6. So that's how we split our middle term is negative 10x plus 3x. And here's our red group and here's our blue group. Next up, negative 2y to the fourth. Factoring out a 5x, we will get x minus 2. And factoring out a positive 3, we are left with an x minus 2. So we have a common binomial factor of x minus 2. And we will factor that out and get an end result of negative 2y to the fourth times x minus 2 times 5x plus 3. Ah, you know what? That just went a little crazy. 5x plus 3. There we are. All right, deep breath after those. Those were not the easiest factoring problems in the whole world. So here we go, on to 6, 4. The difference of two squares. So if A and B are real numbers or algebraic expressions, then A squared minus B squared equals A plus B times A minus B. So you probably remember from chapter 5, if you look at the right side, A plus B times A minus B gives us a result of A squared minus B squared. So we're just going the other way around now. So the difference of the squares of two terms factors as the product of a sum and a difference of those terms. So again, you need to be able to identify what your perfect square was. So just to remind you, here's some perfect squares. So 1 is 1 squared, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, etc. So you should be able to relate these. Um, these are the numbers that will show up quite a bit. Um, and we're basically going to go all the way up to 16 squared. I probably should have done it the other way around, huh? This is a little easy. and 16 squared, okay? So here we go. So now when we're factoring, what we do is we, gotta, we, we look at them. I've got just two terms. Do you see that? So what I, wanna, what I need to look for is, oh, are they squares? Are they perfect squares? So what you do is you just kind of rewrite it. This is the same as quantity x squared minus 12 squared. So remember, you've got your a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So in the case here, a is x and b is the 12 because those are what are being squared. So my a and my b are here. So now it's going to factor as a plus b times a minus b, just as we showed up there, except the a, of course, is x and the b is 12, and you're done. 
Now, if you wanted to just factor by grouping, what you do is make it a trinomial and write it as x squared plus 0x minus 144, and you could factor it like you normally do. So go ahead and um, pause the movie. Remember, you still want to factor out any greatest common factors, so you still got to look for that. And uh, so pause the movie and try B, C, and D. And I'll check in with you in a couple minutes. Okay, let's see how you did. I believe uh, we can take out... Does 8 divide 196? Let's see. No, a 4 does, though. So if we factor out a 4, we're left with 4x squared minus, um, let's see, 4 goes into 19 four times, and then 36, so 49y squared. So here, do you see my a is going to be 2x, because 4x squared is 2x times 2x, and my b is going to be 7y. So I could have written another, probably should have written another one. It's 2x squared and then minus 7y quantity squared. So here's my, my a and my b. And so the factored form is equal to 4 times 2x plus 7y times 2x minus 7y. And so here's our formula. And we're done. Okay, next up, let's see if we can write this guy as squares. So 25 is 5 squared. 4x to the 10th is 2x to the 5th squared. Remember, if you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So my a, in this case, my a will be 5 and my b will be 2x to the 5th. And we will get 5 plus 2x to the 5th times 5 minus 2x to the 5th. And we're done. All right, part D. I hope everything is, is going okay. We can factor out a 2x, and then we're going to be left with 9x squared minus 1. Now, 1 is very deceptive because 1 squared is 1. So here you can rewrite this as 2x times quantity 3x squared minus 1 squared. So you can identify that a is 3x and b is 1. And then, using our handy dandy formula, we will get 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. And the factor of 2 goes along for that ride. And that was the A's, and here's the B's. All righty. Okay, so next up, 
factoring perfect square trinomials. So, here we go. Let A and B be real numbers, variables, or algebraic expressions. It turns out that a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared factors as a plus b, the quantity squared. And the next one, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared factors as a minus b, the quantity squared. So, in words, the first and last terms, and this is how you look for it to see if it will apply. The first and last terms are squares of monomials or constants. The middle term is twice the product of the expressions being squared. in the first and last terms. So you have to like identify what is your A and what is your B and then um, see if it all works. Now again, uh, many people until they're very, very strong with factoring will factor these just by grouping um, or trial and error. So you're going to have to decide what works best for you. I will show you using these formulas because that's our goal for today. So I'll write them out again. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared factors as a plus b, the quantity squared, and a squared minus 2 times a times b plus b squared factors as a minus b, the quantity squared. So here's all our, you know, stuff in there. And let's, uh, let's check it out. So this is what we look for. 9x squared, is that a perfect square? Yes, 3x times the quantity squared gives you 9x squared. And then b is equal to 1, because 1 is the same as 1 squared. So now, this is what you ask yourself. Is 6x equal to 2 times 3x times 1? Yes. So, in that case, and notice that that was you know, 2 times A times B. Do you see? That's, so it worked, right? So what does that mean? That means that, and I'll write an extra step here, this was equal to 3x, the quantity squared, and then we said, oh, that's 2 times 3x times 1, so that worked, plus 1 squared. So we will get 3x plus 1, the quantity squared. So that was A, and here was our B, and we're done. All right, so um, why don't you go ahead and pause the movie and uh, do B, C, and D. If you're having trouble using the formula, that's okay. Just go ahead and uh, factor them by grouping. All right? Good luck. All right, let's see how you did. 
Um, so do you see that we've got x being squared? I'm going to skip the middle one for the moment. And then 4 is a perfect square. So what we've got to ask ourselves is, is that 4x equivalent to 2 times x times 2? And I believe it is. So A is x, B is 2, and the, here's the big question, is 4x equal to 2 times A times B? And it is. And so, since we said yes, that means this factors is x plus 2, the quantity squared. Now, if you did it by grouping, you probably got x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is equivalent. Okay. So, let me put in the highlights for that. All righty. Over here. This is equal to x squared minus, I'll skip that for now, and then we'll have plus 9y, the quantity squared. Now, so a is equal to x, b is equal to 9y, oops, so our question is, is negative 18xy equal to 2 times a times, actually we'll leave out the negative because we'll put that in the formula, 2 times x times 9y. And yes, it is. So 2 times x times 9y. And we're going to end up getting x minus, because there's a minus in that middle term, minus 9y, the quantity squared. Right. And here's our other stuff. Okay, so for part D, we want to start out by factoring out the 2, and we're left with, two, uh, with y squared minus 20y plus 100, which is 2 times y squared minus, we'll leave a space down he over here, plus 10 squared is the same as 100. So we want to know if the middle term is 2 times y times 10. So a was y, b was 10, and then is 20y equal to 2 times a times b. Yes. So we will get 2 times y minus 10, the quantity squared. And we're done with that stuff. Okay, so here we go. The, the next material, um, I will be checking that you do it in the notebook, but um, I'm not testing you on uh, factoring the sum or difference of two cubes, okay? But I think it's good for you to know, if, especially if you're going to go on in math. So I, I thought I'd show it to you. Um, so here we go. Let A and B be real numbers, variables or algebraic expressions. So if I have just two terms and they happen to both be cubes, 
then I will get a plus b in the first set of parentheses, then I will get a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Um, a lot of people mix up the formulas that we just learned previously with this one. Notice that the middle, the middle term isn't doubled. It's just the a times the b. Okay, now the difference of two cubes factors as a minus b, and then we have a squared plus a b plus b squared. And remember, you don't have to memorize these formulas because um, I'm not testing you on factoring these kinds of things right here. So we'll just go ahead and, and work through them together. So here we go. This is equivalent to x cubed plus 4 cubed. Okay, so my a is x, my b is 4, and we will get x plus 4, and then we will get x squared plus x times 4, and I, mi I missed the sign, sorry about that, minus x times 4, a times b, and then plus 4 squared. So here's a, and here's b. So then we can simplify that a little. We'll get x plus 4, and then we'll get x squared minus 4x plus 16. And you're all set. Okay, and then for b, this is equivalent to 2y cubed minus 1 cubed. Remember, 1's kind of sneaky. So a is 2y and b is 1, and we have a difference of cubes. So we will get 2y minus 1, so that's the a minus b, and then we will get a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So this is how it all matches up. So then we will get 2y minus 1, and then we'll get 4y squared, be careful, plus 2y plus 1. And we're all done. All right. Um, part C, and again, if you want to pause the movie and try these on your own, that's awesome. All right. I'll go ahead and keep working them. So this one we could factor out a 2, and then we'll get 64 minus 125 y cubed, which is 2 times 8, 8, no, no, we don't want squares. This will be a cube. So 4 cubed minus 5y cubed which will be 2 times 4 minus 5y, and then we will have 4 squared plus 4 times 5y plus 5y squared. And then I guess I have one on the end. So then, um, and this is how everything matches up. Oh, I didn't put my a and my b. So a was 4 and b was 5y. So here's a and b. So we'll get 2 times 4 minus 5y times 16 plus 20y plus 25y squared.
And the last example on this part, this can be written as 5x cubed plus y cubed. So we have a sum of cubes. A is 5x, B is y. So we will get 5x plus y. And then we will have 5x squared minus 5x times y plus y squared. And this is how everything lines up. And our end result will be, oh, oh no, didn't get that one. Okay, so 5x plus y, 25x squared minus 5xy plus y squared. Okay. So now we have uh, four more examples of, of factoring completely, okay? So um, let's check it out and see, go, pause the movie and see how you do with these. On your mark, get set, go! Okay, let's see how you did. Um, I noticed with this one, I've got a difference of squares. So A is 5x and B is 2 sevenths. So we will just get 5x plus 2 sevenths times 5x minus 2 sevenths. And we're set. And then B, I can factor out a 5x and I'm left with, whoops, 4x squared minus 1. Now don't be tricked by that. I can write this as 2x, the quantity squared, minus 1 squared, A is 2x, B is 1. So the 5x is going along for the ride, and I will get 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And let's see what matches up. Awesome, okay. So up here, I think we did this one in chapter five and I just wanted to show you. Now, notice we have a difference of squares, right? So do you see that you could say, oh, A is Y plus six and B is Y minus two because each of those are being squared. So here we go, we can write this as so it'll look a little weird, but we have a plus b, so y plus 6 plus y minus 2 times a minus b, which is y plus 6 minus y minus 2. So here was my a and my b. Oh, and it was here as well. And my B was here. Now you'll notice we can simplify those. Okay? So what we're going to get is, in those parentheses, we'll notice it's all being added. So this is Y plus 6 
plus y minus 2. And then the other parenthesis will be y plus 6, and I got to distribute the minus, and I'll get minus y plus 2. Simplifying, I will get 2y's plus 4. And then over here, I'm going to get 0y's plus 8. Okay, so now let's check this out. I can factor out a 2 from the y plus 4. So this here is equivalent to this. And then I just get 8 here. I can do the 2 times the 8 to get 16 times y plus 2. And we are set. Oops, let me match these up. All right. So that wraps up 6.4. I hope you have a fabulous day.